Our viewers are always telling us that we have to get out of BGC more, and the truth is we're really good at getting way out of BGC. We just got back from Pampanga yesterday. What we're not really good at is getting a little bit outside of BGC. But that all changes today because we are hooking up with a local who has offered to take us all around Metro Manila and show us some of the best street foods that we can try, some of the best restaurants that we can try in the surrounding neighborhoods. Now, our very first episode in the Philippines was Manila street food, but it was really in Chinatown, so it wasn't even Filipino food. So we're looking forward to trying a bunch of different things today with her. Even though she's going to be showing us the authentic local side of Metro Manila food, we're meeting at Krispy Kreme, which is very unlocal and inauthentic. <laughs> I love these unique food experiences. I think um, it's probably our favorite thing to do while traveling is have new food experiences. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah, and this is Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yep. Hello. And this is Cole. And Hi! I'm Erin! Nice to meet you, Yen. There it goes. Yen is also a YouTuber. The Cucinera at its finest, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, right down below. <laughs> that's Erin. This is Brooklyn, Cold, and Phil. They're the Lockwoods. <gasps> and then some oranges. And this is um, some Pina. This is originally in the Philippines, but it's in Bicol region. How sweet of Yen to bring us some treats. She, she said she knows that I love mango. And so these are candied mangoes. And are these little um, Orange. oranges, like little candy jelly oranges. The kids love these. So the mangoes are for me. Candy for the kids. Phil can have the nuts. I'm gonna try some of these nuts right now because they sound incredible. Yeah, oh, it's like a almond brittle order. Wow, that is so good. Mmm, yeah, it's like peanut brittle or almond brittle or whatever these are, but that's delicious. Peely nuts. Peely, I like it, I'm a fan, thank you. Brooklyn Yen brought us some mango candies and they're so good, you wanna try one? That's good. It's good, huh? Thank you. We're off. Today is going to be a day of new experiences. We are going to try some new transportation. When have we not had a day with new experiences? I don't know. But exactly. I love that about us. Most of the time in BGC, we just walk. We walk everywhere because it's one of our favorite things to do. We have grabbed and we may be, yeah, we've taxied from the airport also, but we have never actually taken public transportation in the form of a bus, so our very first stop is gonna be the BGC bus. And we have a little bit of an adventure because typically you're gonna pay for your fare using a beep card, and I tried to get a beep card, I tried to get the app earlier, and it just didn't work out. So we're actually gonna look for a kiosk at the bus station and try to load one up that way so that we can all get on the bus and ride. Another mode of transportation is the motorcycle. Ah, uh, yes. So you do a back ride. We're walking by Market Market. We've never been inside Market Market, but that is an absolute must for us, and I can see us doing that very, very soon. So here's where we're gonna get the beep card, and I don't really know how this works, so Yen's gonna walk us through it, and then we also have to figure out how much we're actually gonna fund on it. Do you get mom 15 pesos? If you buy the ticket, it's yeah. 15 pesos. Okay. Uh, but if you buy the card... All right, so we'll buy one card and then we'll just tap it for everybody. Okay, so this should give us a little bit of an extra balance in case we want to take the bus again. Or we can give it to somebody else. Thank you. Now we're heading to the bus. Our first bus experience in the Philippines. Yen says that sometimes there'll be a long line there, but I don't see a long line right now, so we've got some good timing. Hello. <laughs> we missed our bus by like a second, darn it. Our very first time and we screwed it up. We failed. <laughs> Luckily, the next bus is in about 15 to 20 minutes. It gives Brooklyn time to pet some cats and Cole time to look for lizards. The security guard told me not to pet the cat because they might scratch us. I wish I could though. The cat's pregnant too. Gotta get our card out and we're gonna tap it. One, two, three, four, and we're good to go. I wasn't expecting it to be air conditioned on here, but it feels awesome. It's probably only gonna be about a 20 minute ride. They're gonna go around BGC first before going to Makati. Finally here after two episodes of One Piece. Ooh. All right, 
right now that we're in Makati, now what? Yen is guiding us through the mall so that we can have a little cooler path. Yen said this, this is the train station, but I guess we can kind of tell that already because right here is the subway. <laughs> oh look babe, fat fuck. Get your mind out of the gutter. Fat fuck. We'll go to the next these little food carts around here are called Jolly Jeeps. They're kind of a staple in the Makati street food scene. And you can tell each one has a number on top and we're looking for 95, which is right here. And this one is known for their Lechon Kowali. So we're gonna give this a try. But first we have to get in line. Yes. We call all good signs, all good signs. We've got so many good signs here. There's a line, so you know it's very popular. And then you just hear chopping, chop, 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 chop. So you know that it's fresh and it's being made right when you order. <laughs> So we're not getting rice because we are pacing ourselves. We're not going to fill up on it because we have other stops. It is only 50 pesos without the rice. That is nine cents. She's the owner. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Erin. That's the owner of the stand. <laughs> they cut up some peppers and put calamansi all over it and then Yen just poured some soy sauce on top of it. A lot of people get their lunch and take it back to their office because they package it up really nicely and neatly for them. And then also people will stand up around the cart and eat whilst they're standing with the little ledge. But we found a little nook around the corner in some shade and Colt wants to be the first one to try it. It looks so good. It is insane. All right, I'm gonna find a good piece. And it's a big one, too. Wow, one bite. Oh, hot. Uh -oh. oh, that's delicious. Lechon is in the name, so you know that it's pork, but it's pork belly, which belly usually tends to have some fat and a lot of flavor in it. I'm gonna dip mine in that sauce that they made. Mm. This is great. Really good. Like it has a, a little bit of a, a toughness of the, the skin that's cooked on the outside, like a little char, and then tender meat on the inside. All right, I'm going to eat off of Yen's plate. Everybody knows Lake John's like my favorite. Mmm, crunchy, crunchy. Fantastic. I was a little bit concerned that it was going to be really, really fatty, like grisly, you know, the kind that's hard to chew through. Obviously, it's fatty. But I think, because it's pork belly, it's not like that at all. This is just like chewing a piece of bacon. It's delicious. I got a lot of crunch on mine. Did you get crunch on yours, baby? A little. I think I have to have another bite to get a little more crunch. I'm gonna have a little bit with some spicy sauce. Mm. It's like spicy teriyaki. I think this one has a little more bite, to, or a little more crunch to it. Mmm, mm-hmm. You can hear the crunch. That was a good bite. It was a good start. 50 pesos, or for 10 pesos more, you get the rice with it. An entire meal for that price, it is definitely worth it. Mm. Saves so much money in Makati. Yen says the next place is just one street over. This time it's card 002, and of course it has a line. This is actually a much bigger line. So this Jolly Jeep also has Lechon Kowali, but that's not what we're gonna get here. We're here to try the Sisi. This will be the second time this week we've had Sisi. We just tried it when we were up in Pampanga. So it'll be interesting to see how they differ and see which one we like best. I think we had some pretty legit Sisi up in Pampanga. This one's called Sisi Serada because the cart is on the street named Rada. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. We would love some delicious sisig. Yeah. You have to try it. Come on. Kasama na. Seventy lang sisig, sisig palang. Ah, okay. Ang rice fifteen. So eighty-five. So if it's with rice, it's eighty-five pesos. Ah, pag. So that is. Ninety pesos. One cent. Sisig with rice is eighty-five pesos, which is less than a dollar and eighty cents. So two of those. Yeah, with with plate. Yes, yeah, it's 90 pesos. Okay. okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> He's going to give us business class seating. <laughs> Beautiful wife is one cooking over there. What's your name? 
Jun, Jun lucky. Jun! Oh, very lucky. He's lucky. Yeah. And we are lucky to have another friend of the Philippines named Jun. We yeah. meet people named Jun all the time. What's your name? I'm Erin. <sighs> Yen has reserved a seat for us inside the 7-Eleven where we can have a little AC. If we haven't said it yet, it is a very hot day today. I feel like summer suddenly came on today. This looks so interesting. It's like sisig, but with scrambled eggs. So, and then there, there's also like a little white sauce on the side. What is that, Yen? Mayonnaise. And we got rice this time. But of course, Colt is super excited to try it. He wants to be the first. I'm gonna get a big chunk. I'm gonna get a little bit of like that. And is a calamansi. Can I put it on here? Or is that for something else? No, that's good. Yeah, okay, now let's try it. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. He always makes me want to eat food when he describes it and says how good it is. I'm like, I gotta try it too. I made sure to get a little of the, the dish and mayonnaise and rice, so everything together. That is so good. I like that. It's really, really, really hard to compare to the sisig we had in Pampanga yesterday because it has the, the egg, so it feels like a totally different dish. But it is so good. There's like a sweetness in the meat, and then the egg makes it a little more savory, and then the mayonnaise a little more creamy, and then the rice kind of lets it all blend together. I'm gonna teach. So here's um, the spoon on the right hand or the left hand. And what you do, uh, use this as a shovel and then you push the food here. Okay. Here we go. And then oh, you have it all in one bite. <laughs> Paul, do you wanna take mine? Thank you. Thank you. Try it, I guess. So you use the fork. I have to start doing that at some point. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have to show us how to use it as a knife. Mm -hmm. The egg adds a lot. And you know what? When you get the meat and the scrambled egg and the rice with all the seasoning, it really kind of tastes like a fried rice. Mm -hmm. I prefer this one over the one we had in Pampanga. Okay, I think I just heard Yen say that this sisig is often served with pig's brain and that the mayonnaise on our plates is a substitute for the pig's brain. That's true? That sounds good. It does. You know, we've had brains before. We had lamb brains in Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Okay, trying to do something a little unusual here. Lamb brains. Deep fried. Cool. You down? Yeah. Okay, buddy. All right. Can I get a little bit of that lemon on it? <laughs> <laughs> Hey babe, tell us where we are. Red. <laughs> is that? Mm -hmm. But is it tasty? I mean, it's so good, but I now realize the fact I just ate a lamb ring. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> okay, where are we, babe? We're at an amazing little place called Lolive. Lolive. In Barcelona. It is great. Okay, lamb ring. Hmm. Yeah, I would try that again. I remember that. It was like deep fried pig brains, right? Oh, lamb. Yeah. But they were little, they were it was like tiny lamb brain. They were oh. like this big. Yeah. yeah. Yen has another place in store for us. There's one more stop left. But before we head over, we have to return these plastic plates. Thank you, June. Thank Bye, you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Come again. Yeah, well, we will. Okay, we made it. Just a few blocks walk, but now we're at a place that's gonna sell uh, tusok tusok, which means poke poke. And we've had a lot of these before also. We're gonna have maybe some banana queue. They have quek quek here. They have hot dogs. Uh, you had mentioned iso. Iso? Kikyam? Kikyam. Kikyam. And which one's that? It's made of fish. Fish. Oh, okay. So those are like the fish balls? Fish sausage or... Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And this is true street food because we are practically in the middle of the street. These cars are just inches away from us as they go by. Uh, butter? 
uh, sticky rice. Yeah. It looks delicious, but I really want the banana cube. I'm gonna order us one of everything, except for the hot dog, because we've had plenty of hot dogs. So you, uh, you actually pick it yourself, so you get either tongs or you can use this stick. So, like I said, we're doing one of everything. Hi, 25. 25? Only 25 pesos. So that is like um, 45 cents, I think. 25? Okay, mom. Okay, thank you. And we were able to get a little shade. These people invited us over um, in this motorcycle parking lot. <laughs> so we gotta get out of the way of the motorcycle it's parking. But Colt is gonna start us off. Colt, tell everyone about what you're eating. So this, I believe, is called quack quack. Quack quack. Quack quack. And it is a hard boiled whole quail egg dipped in batter and deep fried. And we have had this in Cebu, but it was so good we had to try it again. Mmm, delicious. Actually, before I try mine, I'm gonna go and take this cup and fill it up with some sauce. And while I was gone, Cole had to get more quick quick because he loves it so much. Oh, it's hot, but better. And Yen made this sauce mixture for me. It is a little bit of vinegar, a sweet sauce, and a spicy sauce. Now this, it doesn't look like a ball, but it's actually a fish ball. And I'm gonna dip it in here, and then pull. Okay, hold up, he wants to come this way. Oh, we keep having to move because more and more motorcycles keep coming in. So I'm gonna dip it in there, and then just peel one off with my teeth. I got two. Mmm. 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 Not a whole lot of fishy flavor. Almost tastes like potato. Definitely like some flour involved in this. It's pretty good, I really like it actually. Like it's almost like a soft potato chip I feel. I wonder if that's a crazy description. I'm gonna try one more. Mm. That's a good little snack. I have two little things that I'm gonna try. Both of these are fish balls. This one's called kikyam, and it looks, I think it looks like a witch's hat. Mmm, mmm, mmm. A lot of fish flavor in that for one thing but the texture is almost like a, a pizza crust. It's really good. Try the next one with sauce, babe. I don't know, sauces to me, I like, to, I, I leave the sauces for Aaron because I wanna get just the flavor of the thing itself. All right, so this one is a squid ball, little round guy. Almost identical texture, very subtle flavor on that one. Definitely tastes like squid. But yeah, it's almost like a partially cooked pizza crust. That's the, the texture that I would say. It's somewhat dense, but also soft. I'm gonna try one of these things that Aaron had already though. That one tastes the most like pizza crust to me. And Aaron's absolutely right. I don't get any fish flavor from that whatsoever. I'm not even sure if it's supposed to have fish flavor to be honest with you, based on that. But I like that these are crispy. This is something you could just sit and eat like potato chips while you're watching something on TV. I could pop a hundred of those guys. All right, but we're not done. We're also gonna get some banana cue now. This is the cart that is right next to where we got some savory things. And I feel like I'll, I'll call this the dessert cart. And we're gonna get one of everything. Oh really? Yep. Can we get one of everything? Yeah. More, more sugar. Four pieces, uh, one of each is 100 pesos. That's a dollar and 80 cents. So they're charging 25 pesos per stick. I am so sorry. I am a little jumpy. <laughs> Brooklyn's gonna start us off. So she gets to choose what she wants. Um, Brooklyn, there's the banana cue. Banana cue. You want the banana cue? Mm -hmm. So that is a sugar coated deep fried banana. What do you think? Is it crunchy or soft? It's really soft and sweet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Does it taste like bready? It almost looks bready inside, or does it taste like a soft banana? It tastes like a really soft banana. Let me have a bite, and then we'll pass it on to Colt. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Totally, just a really soft banana with a thin, sugary crust on the outside. Now Colt is gonna devour this. I'm going to devour mm -hmm. everything. This one's really, has a lot of banana to it. It's like the other ones that I try, doesn't have too much banana flavoring, but this one mm, has a perfect amount of everything. Perfect amount of 
sugar, a perfect amount of banana, but it looks like bready and doughy, but it really just tastes like banana with sugar. Because it really, really tastes like a banana. That's crazy. All right, I'm gonna try these three balls. Actually, it's one ball and one dumbbell. Yeah, and what, what is this? Those? Karayoka. So this is called Karayoka, and they say that this one's got, it's a cheese flavor. So let's see if it has cheese in the middle. Mm. Yeah, you can really taste the cheese. It's like the tangy flavor from the cheese in there. And it's very dense and kind of chewy. And that's why when I took a bite, it basically held that shape because it just compacts down, probably from the cheese. That is good. Um, so it's pretty savory on the inside. And then the outside, you can tell they just coated with sugar and brulee it a little bit. So it's like just a little, very light coating of crunchy sweetness on the outside. Um, you know what it tastes like kind of is a, a very dense, somewhat chewy, deep fried cheesecake. You wanna try it, babe? Of course, I love cheese. It's like a gelatin donut. It has some buoyancy to it. And the sugar is not too harsh. It's like kind of a, a subtle sweet. Mm, it's good, I like this. And next we have Turan. It's like banana cube, but it's wrapped in lumpia um, paper. And lumpia is so delicious. You can have it fried or fresh, and it has this really nice, light, um, I want to say it's rice paper. It's a, yeah, so it's like made out of rice. Mmm. Mmm. We have had Tyrone before, but this is my favorite. This is delicious. Colt, you've got to try this. Once I sit down, I can't get back up. My legs quick, stopped quick. working. Only one bite, because mm -hmm. my stomach's starting to hurt. Mm. Oh, it tastes like banana cube, but more doughy and less sweet. Perfect description. Mm. Mm. I understand the hype of our tour on. Phil's gonna understand too. Right? <laughs> Seriously, so good. We still have room for one more bite, but we're gonna walk and eat for this one. It's Kemote Q. And it is sweet potato covered in sugar and deep fried. Mm. So this one is like a french fry. It really has that potato taste inside. And the outside, it, the sugar's kind of crystallized more. So you get like hard balls of sugar. So unlike the banana cube that has kind of a light coating, uh, this one it has a, like a thicker sugar crystals that are caramelized on it. That's probably my least favorite of those four, uh, but uh, my favorite, the Turan, I'm gonna finish it while we walk. Mm. That's gonna do it for the food stops, but we still have at least one more really cool cultural experience to go here. We are gonna take our very first ride in a jeepney. First, we have to find a jeepney stop. I don't know what a jeepney is. Ooh. Yen's the only one who knows what we're doing. The rest of us are just along for the ride, but Coming down here, it feels like we're gonna get on a subway versus getting on a jeepney, but she knows what she's doing. Oh, I see, we're just crossing this under the street to get to the other side, and it was out of the heat, which was nice. While we're waiting for the jeepney to get here, I can offer up a couple of little statistics, even for all you Filipinos who already know a whole lot about these jeepneys. Uh, they were created by some resourceful mechanics after World War II because American GIs left these Jeeps, these vehicles behind, so they converted them for use as public transportation, which I think is just really cool. And apparently there are about 200,000 of them on the streets in the Philippines today, but they're an endangered species because in 2017, the Philippines government decided that they wanted to try to phase them out in favor of newer, more fuel efficient, better for the environment kind of vehicles, which would be these imported minivans or mini buses. And that was supposed to take effect in 2020. I'm guessing it all got thrown off track because of COVID. At any rate, it seems like it's pretty imminent now. And of course the jeepney drivers are not happy about this because a $50,000 mini bus that's imported. Oh, here's one right now. Compared to the cost of a jeepney, really is gonna put a lot of them out of business. They just can't afford it. So we'll see what happens, but first, we're gonna do our part to help fund these drivers. Go, go, go. Hop on in there, buddy. There you go. This is 
a tight squeeze, but it's a popular option because it's only 13 pesos per person. So for our group of five, it's 65 pesos. Did I do the math right? I did! Everybody just pays once you're in here, so people in the back just pass their money all the way up to the front. It's surprisingly cool in here because there are no windows. They've got some vinyl window things that will roll down, I would imagine, just when it's raining. But right now it's essentially open with just the bars, so it's very air conditioned in here. It's cooler in here than outside of the bus, I think. Definitely cooler inside than out. And that's surprising because of all the bodies that are squeezed in here. Uh, there's no wiggle room between people. We're all really touching each other hip to hip. But as soon as the jeepney starts moving, then the breeze comes right through. So it's just when we're parked, like right now, that it starts to get a little warm. This is our stop. Hey, Maga, hey buddy. Okay, in hindsight, I don't think that was as well air conditioned as I thought. I think it's just because we were in the shade. Oh, yes. That's real AC. Yeah, that's definitely different. That's better. So we're trying to calculate everything we spent today. Are you including the bus fare? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> so rounded off about 350 pesos for everything today. I'm glad that we stepped out of our bubble in BGC, and I'm sure this is not going to be the last time that we visit Makati. Hey, most of all, we want to thank Yen. You've got to follow her channel, The Cucinera at its finest. We'll put a link in the description so that you can just click to get over there. But what a fantastic experience, what a fantastic person. I hope we get to hang out again because this was incredible, yes. yeah. I love that and it's a pleasure hosting you, touring you around Makati. This is the original uh, business district in Metro Manila prior to BGC being put up. So it was a glad like, subscribe, share my channel. If you love cooking, if you love food, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. See you in the next episode.